But first, when performing the most crucial part of an autopsy to discover if a murder's been committed, using evidence from the wrong body would almost certainly produce the wrong result. Unbelievably, that's what Adelaide senior forensic pathologist Dr Alan Carla did in a New South Wales case where a married couple, first found to be the victims of a car accident, were in fact beaten and strangled by their adopted son. There were many signs that something was wrong, superficial damage to the car. The wife, who was in a seatbelt, suffered greater injuries than her husband, who wasn't wearing one, and there was much more. But what's worse, Dr Carla examined a report from a completely different body and the murders would have gone unnoticed if it wasn't for the persistence of horrified relatives. Graeme Archer has this exclusive report. How many cases in South Australia could it uh, affect? Um, How many cases have you been involved with? I don't, know the, I don't know the details of past cases. There are about a dozen on the, on the list of coming cases, I believe, in which is a witness. On Friday, the DPP held an animated press conference in which he declared his support for Adelaide's senior forensic pathologist, Dr Alan Carla, currently facing an unprofessional conduct complaint in New South Wales over mistaking the double homicide of Pam and Bill Waitman in January 2000 for a car accident. We're in no position to make any medical judgments about the skill or qualifications of Dr Carla or indeed anyone else. For that judgment, we rely upon the advice of the Forensic Science Centre of South Australia. This is surprising given the DPP must make decisions about the suitability of witnesses every day. His decision was made after consulting Forensic Science SA and Dr Carla himself who told the DPP that he typed into the computer the wrong number, up came the wrong brain form, and he performed a report for the coroner. The report contained the wrong brain report. That explanation was read into transcript by DPP prosecutor Jim Pearce in the recent Ballard murder trial in which Dr Carla was an expert Crown witness. The prosecution still relied upon the evidence of Dr Carla and still relied upon the opinions he gave. But what really happened in the case in New South Wales? What we understand from court records is the surviving family recognised the signs of murder from day one. The bruising and scratches to the bodies of the Waitmans, particularly Pam, were consistent with a fight and strangulation, not a car accident. They pressed police constantly for an investigation after Dr Carla signed off on his autopsy, finding nothing suspicious. This telling letter from the State Attorney-General's Department was read into transcript in 2004 by the coroner John Abernethy. It notes that in July 2001... Further information was received by police. In response to this information, police contacted Dr Carla and arrangements were made for a further review. It was only this, 18 months after the death, that obliged Dr Carla to look back at his work. What he found is that he'd made a terrible blunder, which he reported as... Dr Culler suggested that the error was possible due to confusion with another neuropathology report. Dr Culler conveyed his sincere apologies for this very significant error. However, we understand this was more than just an excusable mix-up. Dr Culler had entered the crucial brain pathology report of another person into the Waitman's autopsy findings. There was no mix-up of labels. Dr Carla had got the wrong person and didn't check, allowing two murders to be overlooked. There have clearly been significant failings and errors in the conduct of the initial investigation. The error on the autopsy report was certainly critical and meant the state coroner had been misled. He, like any of us, admits to a mistake. He, like any of us, once he's owned up to it, once he's identified it, and once he has reported and corrected it, seems to me to be entitled to the benefit of the doubt. More than a simple error, it seems. Have you spoken to the family involved? Which family? The family in what? The family who, in New South Wales, from the very start... No, I haven't, is the answer. And who no, I haven't. ultimately had to play... I haven't. ...pathologist, prosecutor and police all in one hit. The question also arises, why wasn't Mr Polaris told of the unprofessional conduct complaint when it was uh, discovered was by one of his prosecutors back in June. Should she have told me earlier?
perhaps, in retrospect, and seeing what's happened since, she might have. But in context, this was, and I remind everybody present, still is, an allegation only. It was much more than an allegation. It was an admission of making a serious error which effectively defeated the purpose of having an autopsy and prevented a murder investigation. I can understand then why she would judge that I did not need to know about every allegation in, uh, that someone had made in her case. Hardly a minor omission, but Mr Polaris is more inclined to reprimand the media for alerting him to this embarrassing situation. The unhelpful publicity surrounding the position of senior consultant pathologist Dr Alan Carla has caused much unnecessary anguish in the community. Not as much as the family of the murdered couple suffered. Even putting those fundamental errors aside, the question remains, why would the DPP play Russian roulette with around a dozen upcoming cases in which Dr Carla is an expert witness? I can't do anything to avoid that risk except take the best advice that I can from those who know. I don't know. I'm advised by those who are employed to give precisely that assessment. They are the best people in town to know. If they don't know, then no one does. Surely if this government has proved itself incapable of reviewing obvious errors of due process made in numerous past cases, why run the risk of adding new ones to the list? We're relying on Dr Carla, A, because he's been involved in the cases in which he's given uh, reports, and B, because I'm told by forensic science that we can rely on him. Graham Archer with that exclusive report.